Coming up on the Sports Desk, baseball fanatics, we are gearing up for the Pioneer League final series. Our young ball players are feeling the love right now, too, especially now that MLB is in town. And you can't safely swim at the pool or beach without a lifeguard standing by. And training to be a lifeguard is no joke. We've got the who, what, where, when, and how. Let's get things started right now. Hey guys, welcome to the Sports Desk, your one source for all things tour and sports. I am your host, Leslie Robbins. For the next half hour or so, sit back and kick back as we give you a gateway to the brightest sports stars and hottest sports spots in Torrance. Before we get to the good stuff, we want to hear from you. Here are the social media stats. I'm at Leslie Mia. The show is at the Sports Desk TV. Find us, tag us, follow me. Our program is also on Facebook. We've got email. All the details are right there on the screen. Tell us what's going on and what we need to know, because when it comes down to it, this show is all about you. Now let's get you in the know with some numbers. In baseball, the playoffs are fast approaching, and the pressure is on. First up, no words can really describe the brutal beatdown Torrance gave to Morningside over the course of two games, except the word wow. In their first matchup, the Tartars beat the Monarchs 22 to nothing. The following day, Torrance got the W as well, 30 to nothing. No words, right? That's why this team is 14-8-1 overall, 7-1 in league. We also had a big Pioneer League baseball game going on recently, West at South. Now, if West won, the Warriors moved into a first-place tie with Torrance. If South won, the Spartans moved into a tie for second place with West. And that's exactly what happened as South beat West 9-3. Well, just days earlier, this baseball battle went the other way as West got a 5-0 victory over South. West is now 15-9 overall, 6-2 in league. South is 16-7 overall and 6-2 in league. As you watch this episode, the final series between West, Torrance, and South, North will be going on. Be sure to keep up to date on scores and highlights on our social media pages. Now, playoffs fever in boys volleyball is heating up too. And so without burying the lead, we were there as West beat North in a pivotal game that guaranteed the Warriors a playoff for third place in the Pioneer League. Third place gets an automatic bid into the CIF playoffs. Let's show you how it all went down. West got swept at North, but did bounce back to beat North at home the day we were there, 3-1. to one. West was led by Eric Dunkel's big swings, defense by Jason Tran and Gabe Podegraze, plus blocking by middle blocker Navjot Barar. This was a really big match against North Torrance. Uh, it was essentially to at least force a playoff uh, for a playoff spot. So it was a very big win at home. Uh, they took us out when we went to North, so we were glad we could return the favor. Season's been uh, a growing process where we're a lot better than we were even two weeks ago. Uh, we have kind of a young team, but we've been growing tremendously. Love these guys. There's a lot of grit, a lot of heart. Um, I really, our season changed when they decided to come together and really start doing it for themselves. They had a team meeting before a league match, and I thought they were crazy not practicing, but they knew what they were doing. They pulled it together. Uh, energy, coachability, uh, effort level, everything has changed since then. A lot of success since then. So uh, I think the big thing for our guys is we had a very, you know, very few seniors, and so these guys are growing on the job. As they're figuring it out, they're going to get stronger, they're going to get bigger, they're going to get better. Uh, it's pretty exciting to know the future of West Volleyball. I'd say the pressure was the pressure was pretty on today. Uh, it's always been a rivalry between North and West, but I think it helped to have home court advantage, and our team was all in it together. So really, we almost didn't feel it since we were having so much fun there. I feel like it's actually kind of like the start of our season because we had a we had a hard build-up period at the start, but now we're starting to kind of get the energy more, and the team's starting to work together. And so I feel like we're really going to end the season strong. So our season so far has been all right. Uh, we, we did pretty well in our first tournament where we had a first place finish in the Silver Division. We struggled a little bit in league with some of the Torrance teams, but as we're starting to kind of get better, we have this game that we won with was really fiery, and we have the Redondo tournament coming up soon, so we hope to do well there as well. 
So I'm a junior, so I will still have another season in my senior year. So I think if we just keep building on what we have here and we keep working together as a team and we're not getting down on each other, we have like high intensity, high energy, I think that'd be really great. So we lost to North last time and none of us wanted to lose again. So uh, we, we, we practiced really hard yesterday. Uh, we, we tried really hard. And uh, yeah, so there was a lot of pressure tonight. So our season like started off a little rough. Uh, we started off losing a lot of games, but uh, we had a team meeting about like what we're gonna do to fix it. And uh, we, we fixed stuff, uh, we're all cheering, we're all like really good friends now. And I think our, I think our team's like really developing. I, I would describe the season as crazy because uh, uh, I don't think there's ever been a team that's like been so like eh and then gone to like what we are now. So I think it's pretty crazy how we did that. I think that just playing outside of uh, West High and just uh, playing club uh, and going to private lessons will really help. Just not just me, but like everyone on the team. And I think it'll make us a more cohesive team next year. The Warriors are currently five and four in the Pioneer League, nine and 14 overall with a crucial matchup this week versus Torrance High. It's their senior night and their chance to punch their playoff ticket. Again, stay tuned to our social media pages for the latest scores. Of course, celebrating student athletes is what we do here at the Sports Desk, and you know the high schools do as well. Recently, Torrance High held a signing day soiree for all of their student athletes planning on competing at the next level. We were there to witness the pure joy and elation from the students, teachers, coaches, friends, and of course, family members. <laughs> Here at Torrance High, we have a ton of different athletic programs um, to offer all kids. Uh, we have a new aquatic center. We've got baseball fields, basketball, volleyball, golf, you name it. There's surf. We have a ton of different sports. And uh, any time we can have uh, a ceremony like this and acknowledge all the accomplishments that uh, our kids have done and put the spotlight back on them for all their hard work that them and their families have done, it's always great uh, to celebrate their achievements. I played club soccer for 11 years before golf. I just started about a year ago. And I just went to the range one day with my dad who plays golf. And I picked up a club and I couldn't stop. Like I got really addicted to it. So I grew to love the game by just randomly starting it. I went to Cal Lutheran just for a campus visit because I got an email from them. And when I went, I just got this feeling like I was so welcome there and everyone was smiling on campus, just so nice. And I just picked it. <laughs> I liked everything about it and especially the golf program. My dad and my coach, uh, Devin at Rolling Hills, they've really helped me develop this swing and just get through the hard times when I make mistakes. So I would love to go pro, that's my plan. Be like Jenny Shen or Dummy Runos who came from Torrance High School and are pro. Well, I was seven years old and my dad had a job at one of the local softball leagues. He was helping building um, a little volunteer for Snack Shack and I watched one game and fell in love. Doan University in Crete, Nebraska. I loved the coach, I loved the team, the energy that I got from the team and the campus itself. Amazing, the little community, I loved that it was like a college town. It's a super pretty campus, it's a smaller school, but it's it's right outside of town, so it's in the middle of nature, and it's so pretty. My little brother loves to come to my games, and I know it's been rough because it's a long softball days, and he's there every day, every time. And my mom and dad, they come as much as they can, and they're my biggest supporters, putting me through many years of softball. Thank you to everyone that supported me, my mom, dad, and my brother. Thank you. It was rough at first, like, you know, getting school and softball at the same time. But in the end, it's so much fun. You end up loving it. You love your teammates. It's cool to see them around school. And like you just you become a family and you support each other and we understand like the problems from school to softball and the traveling it just it makes it so much fun. My older sister always played soccer so I always got my inspiration from her and strive to be like her. My mom and my dad are definitely my biggest supporter. My mom has always been there for me throughout my entire soccer career, driving me to games, packing me lunch, like everything. She's She's my number one supporter. <laughs> I played my first two years on the varsity squad. And my freshman year, I was the only freshman on varsity. And my sister was a senior, so that was cool. We got to play together. I mean, I was scared to play as the only freshman like my uh, the first year. But the seniors and my sister's friends and everyone was totally friendly and like opened me to the team. And it was just, it was great. Here recently, we just celebrated our 100 year anniversary here at Torrance High. So we are rich in tradition and pride and um, our student athletes 
uh, do a good job of, and our coaches do a great job of mentoring these kids, uh, teachers as well, in the classroom, uh, but also out in the fields or the courts or uh, the pools, and then, um, but as well in, in the community. And so uh, being a Tartar here at Torrance High, it's about knowing your role and uh, striving to be a better person every day, uh, learning through experiences, and uh, remembering that uh, there are hundreds of years of, of students and uh, former athletes that have been here, and you're representing not just you, your family, and your community, but everyone who came before you. The sports desk would also like to congratulate West High's Alex Misha, who celebrated on that particular signing day. He has committed to playing basketball at Cal State Dominguez Hills. And three cheers to North High alum and Long Beach State senior Haley Tigret, who shot two under par 70 in the final round to lead the 49ers to the Women's Big West Conference golf title. Long Beach State won its second conference title in a row, and Haley is your 2019 Big West Individual Champion. Here's what she had to say after her big win. I mean, it's awesome to win, especially like as a senior. This is my last like event inside of the Big West and you know being here and doing it with my team especially more of the team win that means something to me than the individual win so yeah oh man <laughs> everything was pretty much on um, I hit every fairway almost I was hitting greens I was putting I felt like I was putting lights out I mean there was a few I think I had one three putt out of these three rounds so it felt good to play good golf and want to carry it into regionals. Uh, I, I was walking with Mac and I was just telling her like, dude, like keep me calm, let me breathe. Like, cause I didn't want to get tense and you know, yank a shot to the left or whoop on a, a putt. So it was all about, we focused on my breathing and just staying calm and smiling as it, you know, it's one of my last walks down the 18th hall as a senior in college. So it was exciting. <laughs> Before we go, I do have tragic news to report out of the athletics department at El Camino College. A student and beloved baseball team member, Slayden John Mole, was recently killed in a traffic accident in Torrance. Slayden was a pedestrian and died at the scene. A memorial for Slayden was held at Warrior Field mere days after his death. To add ECC baseball head coach Nate Fernley started the Slayden Mole Memorial Fund to aid Slayden's family in covering upcoming costs and arrangements. Coach Fernley tells the sports desk, quote, Slayden was from Alaska, so we would like to bring him home, end quote. We'll be right back. RISE stands for the Ross Initiative in Sports for Equality. We're dedicated to promoting understanding, respect, and equality in sports and beyond with the country struggling with race. We believe it's time for the sports industry to come together and really unite the nation. We want people to speak up, take the pledge, and rise up against racism. And we'll rise up. I pledge. I pledge. To treat everyone with respect. Respect. And dignity. I will not tolerate discrimination or harassment of any kind. I will speak up. Speak up whenever I know discrimination is happening. And I will stand up. Get up. Rise up for victims. Take the pledge at risetowin.org. Welcome back to the Sports Desk. Leslie Robbins here. As the weather gets warmer, the beach and pool are the places to be. Well, with that comes safety, and that's where lifeguard training comes in. To get certified as a lifeguard, one must first complete a Red Cross lifeguarding class, and you can do so at the plunge right here in Torrance. Students have to be at least 15 years old. This is a pool certification. However, this certification is universal. You can use it at almost any pool, but as we teach in the instructions, once you get this certification, you're required to act if there's an emergency anywhere. Many times, lifeguards here at the pool have reacted to accidents right outside on the street or you know, in a restaurant when someone chokes or something. You have the ability to help and you're required to help, and also there's good Samaritan laws that will protect you. Uh, if you make a mistake. It's great to see someone be able to use the training to save a life or to make someone's life a little bit more comfortable. The, the kind of students I want to train to be a lifeguard would be people that are interested in swimming and, and people that are interested 
in the protection of other people. Most of the time, the people that, that take this training are people that have been in like the Torrance Swim Clubs. So most of them come with pretty good swimming abilities. And I think we have to get people that are interested in learning the different techniques. And also, we want people that are mature. We want, because most of the time we're, we're working with students, high school students, but we need them to be mature. This is a real job. When you get here, it, 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 most of the time it's very boring, but when it's not boring, it's critical. And you want to make sure that you have someone who can pay attention, someone who's not going to get bored and be on their phone, and someone who's going to be mature enough to, to accept the standards of a job like this. We want to have people here who are interested in in this as a career. Maybe not a permanent career, but you would be surprised at the number of people who work here who go and become nurses or, or um, uh, paramedics or have some other, more training but still continue to work here because it's a really pleasant environment and it's kind of fun. And it's fun to work around a pool, especially if you've been in a pool and grown up in a pool, swimming on swim teams. It's really kind of, it's fun, I think, to, to, to come back and stay in this environment. What goes into the training or even the methods, it's basically it's just what Red Cross teaches us. Everybody here that works here or even at other pools have the Red Cross training. So there's kind of like a guidelines that we go follow, make sure um, that what we're teaching follows the guidelines or like the book that we have. Because um, on top of that, like Tom and my, our, our names are gonna go under the certification. So that's thing we need is like one of these students to go, oh, so-and-so taught us and something tragic happened. And now it's like, it's also on us because we passed them. So they need to, you know, learn the swimming. They need to know the safety issues. They need to know everything that we're teaching them. That's why at the end, and they gotta pass the written test. They gotta pass the water test. I would like to be a lifeguard because, um, I believe helping people is one of the most important things you can do in this world. My family always told me, you know, if you're going to do something, at least, you know, try to help people along the way. And, um, you know, I've been swimming all my life and I figured being a lifeguard would be pretty useful in the event something dangerous happens. The hardest part of the class, having to swim, you know, it's just a lot of uh, swimming, a lot of kicking. Uh, you also get intimate with a couple of people, so that's, it's pretty awkward when you're trying to swim. Other than that, everything is pretty pretty good. I had this swim instructor um, when I was younger um, throughout middle school and a little bit of high school. Uh, she was a lifeguard and I just thought like you know this is so cool I, I always I've always wanted to be a lifeguard and she taught me a little bit about the basics and I just went from there. Being a lifeguard there's a lot of misconceptions about the whole job you know um, it's more about prevention than saving lives you know you don't want to you don't want to have to get in the water every single time so you know prevention like no running you know um, enforcing the rules stuff like that that's the most important um, part of being a lifeguard then there's a junior lifeguard prep class where there is no certification involved rather it's like an sat prep course if you want to be a lifeguard this class could be a great way to learn the ropes it consists of two practices a week at the plunge for 12 weeks here are the instructors breaking the down this, this class. class. So the purpose of this prep class is basically just to get the kids um, better tuned at swimming in the ocean for um, those rough conditions so that we need them to get faster in this class so it's more durable in the ocean. If they like the water, it's always fun. Uh, it is a little tough, so if you're not used to swimming, it's definitely a great introduction to it. It's really fun to do. We're hoping that the kids can get better so that they can pass the LA County Junior Lifeguard test so they can be part of that program and it's just to help them get faster so they can make the time limit. We have three different levels. Right now I'm teaching 9 to 11 age group and then there's two higher ones. Just seeing them get faster and breaking the record, it's, it's good to see progress. Okay, coming up, we've got little boys playing baseball. It doesn't get any cuter than that. We'll see you after the break. Bring it. Time out, guys. I'm late to dinner. My mom's gonna kill me. Catch 
you guys later. Okay. Mom wants us home. Okay. Bye, guys. You guys need a ride? Sure. Oh, yeah. All right. How about some one-on-one? -on -one? Uh, I gotta go eat, man. Sorry. I'll, I'll see you later. That's it. Welcome back to the Sports Desk. Leslie Robbins here. So often we talk about the high schoolers playing ball, but they had to start somewhere. Welcome to the Junior Spartans Academy, an organization aimed at training young baseball players planning on attending South High. Recently, the Sports Desk attended one of their hitting clinics, and I for sure see future all-stars in the making. Our new reporter, Justin Thompson, has the story. Ready to go? Ready to go, man. All right. Everybody know Coach Bloom? What's up, okay. guys? We got a couple of Spartans here to help us out. The Junior Spartans Spring Hitting Clinics are back at South High for baseball players ages 6 through 14 looking to take their swings to the next level. The clinics take place on Monday nights from 5 to 6 p.m. on the South High Varsity Baseball Field and cost only $25 per session. Players will receive individual instruction from South High coaches and players who will take them through hitting stations and live batting practices. I hope to learn to be able to be a better hitter, hit farther, hit with more power. There are sessions running every Monday through May 20th, so if your child or a child you know is interested in becoming a superstar slugger, you can visit JuniorSpartanAcademy.com to register before the spots fill up. The hitting clinics are just one aspect of the Junior Spartan Academy that aims to teach kids the South High brand of baseball. For middle school players, the academy offers an opportunity to work on all aspects of their game while preparing them for high school competition. Their year-round program practices twice a week and plays games every other weekend at a cost of $200 a month. For more on that program, you can also visit JuniorSpartanAcademy.com. No doubt that hitting clinic helps some boys batter up for MLB's annual contest called Pitch, Hit, and Run. Yes, Major League Baseball came to Torrance to put some very talented youngsters to the test. Justin Thompson is back on the baseball beat with this story. The MLB came to Torrance this past weekend. At least it did for kids 14 and under. Any kid under 14 can come, show their talents, and if... Um, they advance, they could go to Dodger Stadium, and if, they're, if they do really good, they could go to the Cleveland All-Star Game. The Pitch, Hit, and Run program provides young kids across the country an opportunity to participate in an exciting baseball or softball skills challenge. Boys and girls between the ages of 7 and 14 compete to showcase their pitching, hitting, and running abilities. Contestants are graded on their performances and given a cumulative score at the end of the day. Entry into this event is completely free, so everybody has the ability to participate. It's very great, and I think all kids should come and just see how they compare it to all kids in the area. And while everybody can compete, the contestants will soon learn it's not all fun and games if they want to advance. The competition starts at a local level, this one hosted by the Torrance Batting Cages. The first place all around, pitching, hitting, and running champions in each age division then advance to the sectional competition, where the events remain the same, but competition gets a little tougher. Sectional all-around champion scores are compared with the other sectional champion scores in that respective MLB team market, with only the top three participants advancing. For those lucky enough, and skilled enough, to advance, good news, you get to compete in the team championship, which takes place at your nearest Major League Baseball stadium. The top three scores in each division's age group across all 30 MLB team championships will advance to the coveted end goal, the national finals. They just want to see like all their favorite players, right? Because it's all like the greatest players that go to like one stadium and see how they compete. So I think they'd like to be there one day, like all the kids. Here, the top contestants from around the country receive an all expenses paid trip to Major League Baseball's All-Star Week. Finalists will participate in the week's festivities compete on the field, and shag fly balls during the All-Star Games Home Run Derby. For competitors who don't advance past each level, all entrants still receive items for their participation, including medals, trophies, and other prizes. And while the prizes are great, 
the Pitch Hit and Run Initiative by Major League Baseball ultimately aims to increase and encourage youth participation and emphasize the fun element of baseball and softball. Great coaching staff, friendly employees. If you haven't came this year, make sure to come next year. Thanks, Justin. And speaking of hitting, take a look at this clutch move in Warriors softball. Here is Gabby Sanchez's game-winning sack fly to beat North 7-6 in nine innings. West High came back from a 2-5 deficit. I'm told that was part of the first sweep of North in at least 15 years. The Lady Warriors are now 15-8 overall, 7-1 in league as their regular season begins to come to an end. And that is the end of today's show. Really looking forward to seeing you back next week. Be sure to stay in touch on social media. And I mean it. Send me your favorite sports picture and you could be featured on the show. We're on Twitter, Instagram. I'm at Leslie Mia. The show is at the Sports Desk TV. Tag us. Find us on Facebook. Send us an email. Keep in touch and take us behind your scenes. For everyone here at the Sports Desk, I'm Leslie Robbins. Thanks for watching.